How do you start using ChatGPT? First step is to go to chatgpt.com where you can access the chat interface completely for free. And here, instead of typing a question, you can click one of these pre-made questions, plan a mental health day to help me relax. And immediately ChatGPT is thinking about your question and then it asks you a follow-up question. I'd love to help you plan a rejuvenating day. Could you tell me what your favorite ways to relax are? I personally like hiking and reading. Okay, so just type in your response here, then click enter. And now ChatGPT is analyzing your response and using your response to formulate a personalized answer tailored to your preferences. So this is ChatGPT's response, crafting a relaxing day around hiking and reading. In the morning, begin with a gentle wake up, head out to a nearby trail or park, quiet reading time, tea or coffee break, some evening reading. So what's great here is that you can actually use ChatGPT for free without signing up for an account. I really want to emphasize that the best way to use ChatGPT and think about ChatGPT, it's an ongoing conversation. The more ChatGPT gets to know you and what you're looking for and your preferences, the more tailored the responses are going to be. So now what I'm going to do here is I like this plan, but I also want to incorporate stretching. So here I'm giving ChatGPT additional feedback to improve its plan even further. And now here you can see it's it's sprinkled in a little bit of stretching in the morning, right when I wake up for hiking, doing some dynamic stretches to warm up, which is great. Relaxing activity, a few more stretches focusing on areas that might feel tight from your hike or sitting. And so what I did there is I gave ChatGPT feedback to improve its answer. And then it came back with an answer even more personalized to my preferences because now it includes hiking, reading, and stretching. Now, even though you can use ChatGPT without creating an account, I highly recommend you create an account so that ChatGPT can remember your conversations and update its memory so that it can give you better, high quality, more tailored answers in the future. So you're not starting from scratch every single time. So to do that, just click sign up for free up here. And then you can create an account with your email address or you can log in with Google, Microsoft, or Apple. So go ahead, I'll just sign up with a fake email Okay, just so you can see what the next step is. So after I put in an email, then it asks me for a password. Okay, at least 12 characters in the password. Go ahead and do that. And now what it's gonna do is send a verification email to your email address. So open your email, click on the link inside the email to verify your email address. And once you verify your email and log in, you'll see a screen like this. This is the ChatGPT web app interface on the free plan. Okay, so on a paid plan, for example, you'll have a couple more model options here. On a free plan, you'll be using this ChatGPT model that's already pre-selected. And so before we start having a conversation with ChatGPT, let me point out a couple of things in this interface. So this central area here where it says message ChatGPT is where we're going to be having a conversation. Let's ask ChatGPT to create a business plan for a local donut shop. And you can type anything you want. Here I'm just giving you know simple instruction and ChatGPT is already creating a business plan for my local donut shop. And here it keeps going. So just scroll down to see the rest of its response. You can see it outputting this information in real time, including the executive summary, company description, market research, and more. Now, if you ever want to stop, let's say you messed up the prompt, you want to ask something else, you can click this button to stop the generation. So here you can see there, it just kind of stopped it mid sentence. And that's really useful if you kind of realized, you know, the prompt is not great or not specific enough. You can go ahead and edit it by clicking edit message here. So let's say we want to add additional more detail, create a business plan for a local donut shop in Salt Lake City. Okay, so here I'm editing the prompt adding more detail and clicking send. And now ChatGPT is going to try again using the additional information. And what's cool here is you can see the previous response as well. So these buttons here toggle back and forth. This was the first prompt I put in without specifying the location and this was ChatGPT's answer. Then click the right toggle and you can see ChatGPT's answer for this updated prompt. 
And what I'm calling prompt here is just me talking to ChatGPT. In the context of interacting with ChatGPT, everything you tell ChatGPT is essentially a prompt. So you can see here it's creating the business plan, but you can also ask questions, ask for explanations, ask for definitions, ask it to update its previous response, for example. Okay, and here you can see the end of ChatGPT's response, and it actually auto-suggests follow-up questions that you might want to ask, like what's the break-even time that you're forecasting? How much is it to franchise? You can go ahead and click one of these to get ChatGPT to answer this follow-up question, or you can type another follow-up question here. And you can see on the left-hand side, ChatGPT automatically gave a name to our conversation based on the topic that we're discussing, right? I asked for a business plan. It gave me a business plan in summary. So it titled our conversation business plan summary. So this is super useful to go back to previous conversations you've had with ChatGPT and easily reference them by what you were talking about. Now you can go ahead and edit this name. So if you click rename, you can go ahead and change the title to say Donut Shop, Salt Lake City, okay? You can also share this conversation. Let's say you have a marketing partner who wants to use the research and recommendation from ChatGPT. So click share, you can click create link, and then you can copy this link or share it directly via LinkedIn, Facebook, Reddit, or Twitter. And then down here, and then down here below our conversation are previous conversations that you've had with ChatGPT. So obviously if you're brand new logging in for the first time, this will be empty, but as you have more and more conversations with ChatGPT, you will see this left sidebar populate with different conversations. All you have to do is click on this conversation and it will take you to the full conversation history. And you can even ask follow-up questions, even if you had it in 2023. Now, the last thing I want to show you is, let's say you go to a previous conversation you've had, how do you create a new chat? So just click this icon in the upper left-hand corner that says new chat. Go ahead and click that, and it's going to open this blank screen where you can ask ChatGPT a question or click on one of its suggestions here. Let's ask it to create an illustration for a bakery. And what's really cool here is this is showcasing ChatGPT's multimodal capabilities. All that means is in addition to text, it's also working with images. Multimodal just means multiple modes, in this case, text and image, right? My prompt was just a text consisting of two sentences asking for an image, and then ChatGPT replied with an illustration. And let's say we want a logo for the bakery, which is one of the suggested follow-up questions. Now it's gonna ask you a bunch more questions about the logo. Let's just answer them real quick for fun. Let's just call it Salt Lake City Bakery and pink. I would like to include bread in the bakery logo and let's see what it produces. So it's spelled SLC wrong. Text in images is a pretty difficult problem. So AI currently isn't super great for that, but I do like that it tried to make it modern and pink. It had the symbol of bread. And so just in the past 10 minutes, right, we've gotten a business plan for a hypothetical local donut shop in Salt Lake City, as well as two pictures for a bakery specializing in sourdough bread. And this is on the free plan, right? We haven't paid for ChatGPT at all. And the benefit of signing up is that ChatGPT remembers all of your previous interactions in history and will start to learn your preferences over time for what constitutes a high quality answer. So highly recommend signing up for an account, even just a free account, so that you have that conversation history with ChatGPT. So that covers everything you need to know to get started using ChatGPT today. You don't need to download anything fancy, no additional apps or anything like that. Just go to chatgpt.com, start having a conversation there. When you're ready, create a free account. And then when you log in, it will look like this interface with your conversations saved on the left-hand side.